Hello! Welcome to another episode of Cat Calls. I am Cat Vine and I am your host and I do this show every Thursday on twitch.tv slash catvine. Yeah, you guys know if you're in the chat because you're here watching it live. I'm glad you guys liked that intro. Isn't it funny? He was wearing three jackets. <laughs> what a funny guy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much everybody for coming through. Uh, if you like the show, uh, please, you know, I got these little little things down here. Go ahead and follow. If you feel so inclined, go ahead and subscribe. I've got a goal to get to 20 subscribers by the end of the month. And if you want to throw me a tip, you can do that. I'll share a link later. I'm just getting all the self-promotion out before we get to the regular show. Thank you, Bloodsker666. Bloodsker. I don't know how to exactly pronounce that, but I like the happy star dancing around like the satanic name. And yes, if you do subscribe, you get all those really cool like emotes that are of my phone. Yay, cute. Anyway, bleh. <laughs> Everyone, give a big round of applause for our guest today, Quiet Bison! <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, besides making awesome clips for my intro, Quiet Bison uh, makes beats that any Flume fan will go gaga over. He's got this complex, delicate sound. Uh, on Twitter, I said that it was delightfully dexterous in its percussive elements, but it's also incredibly enigmatic because while all the drum sounds are hard and edgy, uh, he pairs them with these warm, soft synth chords, as well as a mix of organic elements and vocal samples. And it just gives his tunes this like misty, ethereal glow. Let's put it like that. <laughs> Flume is actually a fan. He added Quiet Bison's track Thimble to his Hi This Is A Playlist playlist which it's pretty cool when Flume likes your music, right? <laughs> um, in September of last year, Quiet Bison released a seven track EP called Nightfall, inspired by his life as a night owl. I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the chat can relate. I know that I can. And it's got all those slow air emotions that seem to gather in the mind during the darker hours. That is when I named him a billboard artist to watch and I have continued to pay attention and that's good because he's finishing up a debut album that should come out either later this year or early next year. You know, I am a sucker for debut artist albums because I love a statement. <laughs> Uh, the first single from his debut album, I don't know the name of it yet, but the first single is called High Like This with Rio Cragun. Um, I'm going to play that track for you now. It doesn't have an official visualizer, which never stops me here at Cat Calls. So I made a visualizer for High Like This starring, you'll never guess, a bunch of footage of wild bison. Yeah, you get it? <laughs> you get it? All right, you guys enjoy this show. Uh, video, song, high like this. It's fucking, it's a banger. It's definitely one of my favorite songs from my release radar playlist on Spotify last week. And when we come back, Quiet Bison will be on the show. So I hope you guys have some questions for him. This show is interactive. It's all about us working together to make it the best show possible. So I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna play the video and let's have a dance party. Yo, that was a banger. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed the video and I'm glad that you enjoyed the song. And you know who else is glad you enjoyed the song? Oh shit, I forgot to move his video. <laughs> Quiet Bison is glad you liked the song. <laughs> Am I on? You're on. You're live. Oh, no. I just forgot to move your video. Oh, so. no. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's always a grab bag of fun here on Cat Calls, trying to figure everything out, make sure it works right. But how are you doing? I'm really good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> Everyone was saying banger alert and loving uh, high like this. And Jacob Johnson one two three loves that you're talking into the mic, so <laughs> they, they enjoyed seeing your mic. <laughs> so high like this is your latest single, and um, I know that you had a really good time working with Rio Craigun on the track. Um, uh -huh. I know that you're not him, <laughs> but listening to the lyrics, it feels like he kind of channeled some of that tension that's been in the air, both from personal struggles that we're all experiencing as well as some of like 
the political chaos that we're feeling in the streets. Is this a song that you right. guys worked on this year, or is it something that existed? No. Yeah. Well, I made the I made the instrumental for it. Uh, I think May last year, um, and then he messaged me. I think it was September, maybe last year, and I was going to LA in October, uh, and. Yeah, then I met him in L.A., and we worked on a few multiple things. Uh, and then we made it, I think, in late October, early November. Oh, wow. So it was last year. It wasn't even this year. And then, yeah, recently I said to him, like, it doesn't actually kind of have, like, a context for this year. Like, it feels like it's, it was made this year. Like, right? For this He's like, work. there's a war outside. And I'm like, I know there is. Like, what the fuck is <laughs> And you're in Portland, of all places, so I'm like, we're yeah, just, like, And the, and the surrounded. craziest thing is when in the song when he says, uh, there's wildfires happening in Washington right now. <laughs> no, okay, I was like, I don't remember that lyric. <laughs> and then he's like, the glass fires are out of control, and uh, when that fly landed on Pence's head, it was really, like, yeah. Yeah, was, the craziest thing is that he wrote the lyric, coronavirus, watch out, in November <laughs> last year. Oh, my God. It's like, did you ever see that, um, are you a fan of Dave Chappelle and the Dave Chappelle show? Well, I know Dave Chappelle, but I haven't watched much of his stuff. There's a really good uh, bit where it's like, Tupac is dead. People at a bar are like, nah, Tupac's still alive, man, I swear. And then the DJ plays a Tupac song, and he's talking about, like, things, George W. Bush as president, and, like, this girl <laughs> right. who farted on the dance floor, and they're just like, how is this? How is this real? But he's like, I'm dead. I don't know. It's very goofy, and you should check it out sometime. <laughs> and anyone watching should check it out sometime. Um, how has this year been for you, though? Um, I'm sure it's very different from what you had anticipated, as with all of us. What's yeah. been keeping you sane? Um, I mean, I've just been working on a bunch of music. Like, I've been working on an album and, uh, and like, various... Well, I mean the singles, and then the mixing of all the stuff, which has taken quite a bit of time. So I guess it's given me time to work on music is the bright side. Because before that, it would have been probably a lot of shows and a lot of touring. Well, what, yeah, because I was going to go on tour with um, Chet Porter in May. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that I don't, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's still happening. Well, it's definitely not. <laughs> well, but I don't not, think it's, not this May. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think it's I don't I don't think it's even been rescheduled as far as I know. But um, yeah, that would have been cool. But it's yeah, it has given me more time to work on music, which is something I was hoping for, anyways. Because I was kind of like, oh, I'm going on tour to new shows. That'll take time away from finishing up yeah uh, these projects. Because I was trying to finish that real song in January. Oh wow! Um, and it was I was like, oh, it's probably going to come out like February, and then. Uh, yeah, it's now October. So. <laughs> I mean, I think that seems like everyone's timeline in 2020. Just like had to spend a good three months just looking at our hands, like, uh, yeah, what, what is this, <laughs> and then like yeah. make the most of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm impressed that you were able to keep any sort of creative motivation while in quarantine, though, because I know that for some people, it's like okay, all I'm going to do is work because work is how I get through stuff like this. And some people are just like, I don't even want to do anything. Like, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I think a lot of producers kind of feel this way, that, like, quarantine isn't much different from their normal lives anyways. <laughs> like, most people who produce pretty much have lived in quarantine for, like, the past 10 years anyways. I feel so, that. <laughs> I, I don't really know. I, I think producers probably have it the easiest. People who really like DJing probably have a hard because that's like that's what they love doing. But I I've never really loved doing shows. Like it's not my favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess also because I haven't found a way to make a show something that feels unique or, or special. So um, yeah, I've always enjoyed producing more and. I, also, my music, I don't really intend to make my music for shows. I kind of just make stuff from them. It may suck at shows, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not like, one, two, hands up! <laughs> yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's not house music. Well, Although maybe it is. 
it's it's music for listening in the house. It sounds like you're saying. Well, yeah, it's house music, <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm not gonna write out. I'm not gonna roll out making a house song. Maybe I will. I personally believe that it is possible to dance to your music, though. But maybe in just more of a like, yeah, like get really yeah, stoned in the back is, of the actually, room, I, like, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes when I'm doing shows, I can't even dance to my music. So. <laughs> Are you a big dancer yourself, though? I mean, it would be boring not to dance to the music because if you see a guy on stage, it's just like, just doing this <laughs> and, and that. That would be kind of boring. So I, I do, you know, I try to let the music influence the show, but. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's like, and maybe it's just how loud it is on stage, but sometimes it's like, what is the rhythm of this thing? That <laughs> sometimes About your weird, own tracks? Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, my, well, all my shows are my own tracks. I, that's all I play at my that's show. That's great. Yeah. Um, but sometimes like, I don't know if it's just how loud it's ringing in your ear. And I tried to wear earplugs for most of them. Please do. But sometimes, sometimes the... <laughs> The, what are they called? The, Monitors? N no, well, they have like a, a thing that's playing next to you so you can hear it. Because if you don't have a speaker that's next to you, yeah, and you're playing the music, it's just going to sound like bass. Because you don't really hear what's out on the floor. Yeah. I think like, that's the monitor, so have, but I'm not a professional. I think it's a booth monitor. Booth monitor. Blood skirt. Blood skirt. 666 just said that exactly as you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... But that sometimes those are so loud that it just rings in your ears, and then you think you're listening to like a half semitone higher version of the song. You're like, "Am I playing everything out of key, or what's going on?" Because I play like note freestyles over my stuff, so sometimes it's like, "All right, well, it sounds like it's out of key, but I don't. I guess it's not." Oh song, my gosh. I don't know. No it's wonder weird. you don't love playing live, because this is what's going on in your head. You're just like, "I something's wrong." <laughs> I don't know. It's a weird. It's a weird effect. I've never. I never can explain to people why it, it's like that. But sometimes things seem like a little mm -hmm. bit higher pitch. And sometimes even I, I don't know if it's just like the adrenaline of being on stage or something. But it's sometimes like, is this song faster than usual? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your heart usual? is just going like this, and you're like, yeah. uh, I think yeah, the world's in slow mo. Right. That's definitely happened to me before. But just so you know, Jacob Johnson123 says that they've danced hardcore to your music. Uh, and OT John said, I was dancing with the bison. So everyone's... I think I think this newer song is more danceable than the past one. And it's more trappy. Um, was that an intentional move? Or is that something that just kind of came out of you at the time? No, it was just... Well, I mean, that was a lot of what I was making last year. Because I made this before I made my last EP. The Nightfall? Like my last EP came out. Yeah, Nightfall came out, and I made this before Nightfall, and then I'm like, I'm mm. going to save it because I think it needs... Uh, originally, I was like, it needs... Because there was a less melodic part at the intro. I'm like, it needs someone who can rap, and then maybe also a singer. And then I was talking to Rhea, I'm like, oh, who can rap and sing? So why don't I just get him on <laughs> both parts? Um, but... Yeah, so no, it, it was kind of just what I was making at the time. What I've been making recently is more more variety, I guess. I've been liking a lot of uh, uh, ballet funk type rhythms. Ooh, I fuck with like that. That's, that's what I've been making the most uh, recently. That and some drum and bass, and then I've been trying to make house, but I haven't done a good Track. Yeah. Well, drum and bass is always welcome. I'm from South Florida, and South Floridians fucking love drum and bass. Do they? Hell yeah, we do. <laughs> when I was, uh, I'm a little older than you, and when I was coming up in the in the rave scene of Miami and South Florida, jungle drum and bass, Florida breaks, every anything that was just like, da, 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 I don't know. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. appreciate that in your music already. You, you're yeah, one for I the really perfection. like jungle. Jungle's one of my favorite. Uh, genres in that realm um it's something that something that's cool about listening to like old jungle or um i guess old drum bass too is there's i don't know there's like a grittiness to everything yes i feel like sometimes is lost so i feel like if you're gonna make that genre you have to go back and listen to 
how it started and where it came from. I to, appreciate that. To get that. like to nail the grittiness and know that there needs to be some sort of like, like a lot of that stuff would sometimes click, and then there'd mm. be like the bass would be like way too loud, but it was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> uh, and I feel like sometimes people now are, you know, it's there's like people worrying, oh, should I get this like. I have to get the levels right in the mix or I have to compress this thing and put an OTT on everything. Like, sometimes it's better if you just, like, just have the raw sounds in there. Yeah. And some things can flip, some things don't. I fuck with that. Um, I actually did an interview with Grizz recently, and he was talking about on his latest mixtape EP that he released, like, he tried, he let go of wanting to produce things perfectly and like engineer right. the sounds right. perfectly and it was like what feels good <laughs> and right yeah yeah I think yeah I mean uh yeah I think they're going the probably the right direction if they have that yeah. mindset yeah. yeah it's just nice no one needs a fucking clean ass thing all the time <laughs> well that's kind of what happened with uh dubstep mm, like yeah dubstep true got to a point where it became so clean and lost the grit that it originally had that people wanted something different and that's why people went to like rusty and, and trap music because it was a little bit grittier. Yeah. And then I feel like it reaches a point where maybe trap music's gonna get not gritty enough anymore. And people are gonna move to something else. I just wanna like rocks in my shoe sound. <laughs> I wanna yeah. be uncomfortable. What does that sound? It's just like pain? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh there's something in my sock. I don't know. <laughs> Um, Stepping on a Lego type beat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I would actually love to hear a little bit more about your personal background. Um, we've never had the chance to talk before, so this is really uh, me getting to know you as a fan. Uh, you live in Portland, and I, or just outside of Portland, and I believe uh -huh. you've been there for some time, but uh -huh. you were originally born in California? Yeah, I was born in Ventura, which is right outside of L.A. Okay, okay. So it's pretty close to L.A. But. What kind of, how old were you when you moved? Like, do you have a good memory of oh, living in oh, Cali? I going to say, how old was I when I was born? How old were you when you were uh, born? I was, <laughs> yeah, I was zero. Um, how old was I when I moved? I think yeah. it was like, I want to say I was like four, maybe. Oh, okay, so you're really young. I was really young. Yeah. It was Either four, maybe even younger. I can't remember. So Portland's like hometown, basically. Yeah, well, well, I think I lived in, I lived in an even smaller town in Washington for a while, mm. like a really small town. Then moved, I think, I don't remember how long I lived there for. But then, even when I was young, really young, we moved out there, moved to Portland. Um, and so, yeah. Are you Portland, a big... What were you saying? Oh, were you gonna say? <laughs> Nothing. You continue. Oh, what I was gonna say is, I think um, the nature of Portland and the trees, maybe just the gloomy weather. Uh, even though I was born in California, it's something I like better in Portland. Yeah. Like going back to California, it's just, it's just brown hills, and then someone like plants some grass, and it's like, oh look, we have grass here. It's like we planted that though. Yeah, I also get that being from South Florida. <laughs> Yeah. Weird crap so, yeah, grass I think everywhere. The gloominess is something I enjoy. Yeah. Um, what were you into as a kid before you became a big music obsessed producer guy? Or were you always was music your first love? Um I'm trying to think. I mean long like when I was like four probably. Um I really liked Star Wars. Hell yeah, Star Wars. Um, was that, were you like four when the uh, one, two, and three came out, or what got you into Star Wars? Oh, I was, yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I don't think I was alive when the Phantom Mask came out, but I was definitely alive when the third one came out, because I remember seeing it in theaters. Oh, not, um, damn, that's a cool, like, childhood memory. Well, I, I just remember that the scenes were uncomfortable, but, um... Yeah, so there was that one, but I remember watching the Phantom Mets and the, uh, what is it called? Duel of the Fates, the Dark Mall. Uh, is it that one? I'm, yeah, I remember, <laughs> I think I always used to, like, hum that or whatever. 
voice singer. So I think that's probably my earliest music memory. Um, it's a good one. As far as music, though, I think, well, I mean, as far, like, what got me into music was, um, I think, like, Dead Mouse. Mm. Long, long ago. Uh, when I was first dying, I loved Dead Mouse. I still love Dead Mouse. Um, Dead Mouse loves I, I you. Don't really, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Um, but, yeah, so Dead Mouse, I'd say Dead Mouse, Sad, and mm. Calvin Harris were my first main influences. I fuck with that. Kind of drifted away from that. But when I, who else? There's someone else. There's nothing, I, there's nothing wrong with some old school Calvin Harris. Oh, and. Yeah, I still, I still love, like, all the old Calvin Harris songs. Yeah, so. hell Yeah. Fucking ready yeah. for the weekend? Anytime. Yeah. 18 months? About it. The one after that? that not so called? much. Day about, <laughs> about You by Calvin Harris is a really good track. Love that one. Mm -hmm. Ca Was someone saying something? Cole Fortson says The Phantom Menace is a cinematic masterpiece. So they are right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, definitely a, an interesting film. <laughs> Um, so back to you getting into music, when did you first start producing? Because like you are relatively young for the scene, maybe yeah. in dance music, like I, people are used to young kids producing and doing shows. Yeah. But how long have you been was, doing this? Well, I was kind of like, I was kind of like, like, you know, more Kisner? Uh, not personally, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was kind of like more Kismet, but I sucked. So I, I was producing <laughs> nice. really young. Um, you were like less Kismet? <laughs> yeah, it's like less good. I think I started when I was about thirteen or fourteen, and then was that with FL um, Studio, Fruity Loops, as as I used to say. No, I think I started in Ableton actually. Oh wow! I only had Ableton Lite, so I think I moved to FL because I only had Ableton Lite. True. And FL was cheaper. Yeah. Um. But I but I started out because I watched a um a Launchpad video. Ooh. Like, uh, what was his name? Uh, well, there was the Madly on. Of course. Kind of video, Pop culture. That's just one. a I think that classic. one might have been. I think the Madly on one might have been what got me interested in producing. Oh, cool. Not because I wanted to produce music, but I thought, like, oh, it looks fun to, to press buttons that play sound. <laughs> and press, like, once buttons. So I'm like, I want to learn how to do that. So I got a launch band. Oh, nice. And came with Ableton Lite, so that's how I started. But then I realized, wait, like, wait, how do you route it to play any these things? So I'm, like, I'm gonna have to learn Ableton if I want to be able to press these buttons. Like, right, they don't come pre-stocked with like 21 pop songs. <laughs> no, so I'm like, how would you even do that? Um, so I, I had to learn how to use Ableton pretty much. At and least I, like in the to this day, I've never used the launch pad to play like sound in that. Oh like, shit. <laughs> Do you use it though? I think it broke. So no. <laughs> Thanks for your service. That's not, that's, you did great. It's definitely not a sponsorship for <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> well, as far as like teenagers learning instruments go, that's a lot softer on your parents' ears than like the tuba or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, you can't plug headphones into the tuba. Yeah, that'd be good if you could. <laughs> oh my god, for real. It would take a lot of pain out of a lot of households. Was that like a gift that you got, or did you buy that for yourself? Yeah, I got it. No, I got it for Christmas one year, and then that's Fuck yeah. how I started producing. Nice. What do you remember about the first song that you ever made? I'm sure it was ter it was terrible, maybe, <laughs> or maybe it was great. I don't think I have it anymore, actually. Um, but it sounded like like it was pretty much exactly like. Um, it's not one Black Eyed Bee song, or is it Will I Am? It, it's Will I Am. This, you know, like scream and shout. Is that what it's called? Oh, and then we scream and shout and yeah, let it one. all it out. Sounded, it pretty much just sounded like the beat of that. I think. Bring the horrible. action. <laughs> the drop. <laughs> it was pretty much that. It was it's, like some weird like techno song essentially, and then it was weird because something I've noticed is like. When you start out producing, you think everything you're making is like 
oh man, this is crazy. I can't believe I made this. And then you listen the next day and you'd be like, what, what the hell did I make? Yeah. I feel like the number one thing you get better at producing is like, you get a better gauge for, is my making crap right now? Or is it not? <laughs> What's your um, gauge? How do you know? Well, for a while, I felt like I knew. But recently, <laughs> now you're not I've so sure. Stuff where I wake up the next day, I'm like, "What the hell was I thinking?" <laughs> so I don't know. I think maybe I've lost my uh, ability to tell something's crap. Sounds but, like you're in the middle of making an album to me. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. Someone once told me a story about a band they were in, and they would, and this was like in the 80s, 90s. It wasn't like today. But they'd record their demos and then they'd go out into the park somewhere and they'd play it on like a boom box and they uh -huh. would just kind of see how people reacted as they were walking by. And that was like their sly way of being able to tell right. if people loved it or hated yeah. it. Or... I've heard people say it's good to, especially when you're mixing, to put the song on just in the background when you're listening to your house mm. and see how it sounds. Like if, you, if it sounds like a song you listen to, then probably good and if it if you notice something in it, it's probably not good um so i see what you're saying yeah if it can just kind of flow in the back of your head then you're on to something yeah <laughs> and something uh something uh alice in wonderland said to me is like put on like a podcast in the background when you're mixing and it will give you like a like the audio of the podcast will never change the voices will always sound the same so when you're mixing you'll be like all right, that's the one grounding sound that I hear. So you hear oh, one sound that never changes. That's that, outside of the mixing. And that does help quite a bit. Because if you're mixing for a long time, you can kind of, you'll get to a point where like, oh, this sounds pretty good. And then you'll close it, come back in a few hours, and like, this is horrible. There's like no bass, so there's no mid, or there's no high end. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think putting on some sort of, Probably podcast, because that's not, there's nothing melodic in podcasts. Yeah. Or if you do find a podcast, make sure there's enough music in the background. Yeah, that's a really cool um, tip. Shout out Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, shout out Alice in Wonderland for that tip. I am brought to your music by the skill you have with the percussion. Oh. I, I, I'm really drawn to the percussion and the way that you kind of soften it with the chords and the samples you've got a really nice right. like textural but not overwhelming sort of style you know it's it's right, not okay. all g jones like mind fuck <laughs> even right. though, which is yeah, great yeah. too but yeah how when did you some, stumble some on that like style people. where does that come from for you no i mean it was probably um i would say because for a while I would, I would just make like progressive house um and then i hit a point where i was like i don't want to keep like i would go in to make a song and like all right let's get this kick rhythm down <laughs> on one on each beat and it's like all right well it's like you would know what you're going to make when you go into the doll and that's the worst thing um because i feel like you shouldn't really know what you're going to make when you go in to make something you should or shouldn't? Um, shouldn't. Okay, it's yeah, nice. It's sometimes better if you don't, because then you come out with something like, I didn't have the idea to make that, unless you have, like, a really solid idea that you want to try and make. You're like, this will be a good one. But if you don't, um, and you're going in with, like, a, a standard, like, rhythm, then, I don't know, it does, it, at that point, it doesn't really feel like you're creating anything new. It just feels like you're using, like, a template to make some sort of, Following the formula, so, making something for the DJs to spin. Yeah, it was probably, and it, like I still love um, house music, but I think maybe the way I looked at it was instead of changing the melodics in house, I would just change the rhythm. I fuck with that, yeah. Because um, some people are still making house music that's uh, like innovative now. But at the time, I was just like, I'm just going to change up rhythm because I don't really want to do the same thing. Um, and then I think it was probably listening to maybe Jack New, 
Hey, nice. Nice shout out. Either, yeah. It's either Jack U. I think maybe the three were like Jack U, uh, Rusty, and Blue were probably the main ones. Because Rusty had some really crunchy, like gritty percussion, which I love. Um, oh, and Hudson Mohawk, too. Hudson oh, Mohawk, yeah. Love Fuck it. yeah. Shout out. Um, Hudson Mohawk still probably one of the bigger influences I currently have. Um, but yeah, it was probably that. I'm like, oh, there's a lot you can do with percussion. You don't just have to use the same, uh, like, percussion rhythm. Yeah, there's and so many after, spots in there. You can just... <laughs> yeah. And then later on, I think, I kind of was like, all right, well, I've gone into the EDM side of it, but what's... Why do, the, why do these people make this genre? Um, so I got into listening to like Flying Lotus and, mm. uh, and Jay Dilla and all those kind of people. Hell yeah, Jay Dilla, um, that's doing your research. Even uh, even like Jai Paul is one that I really enjoy. Uh, specifically a AK Paul's brother who does a lot of production. Um, My friend was just talking to me about Jai Paul and I didn't know about Jai oh, really? Paul and now I didn't I'm know about Jai Paul? I'm a, I'm an asshole apparently. I a, lot my, a lot of my music taste comes from the GTA Five radio station. So, oh, nice! So, That's very um, yes. You're not alone there too. I'm sure. No, but but AK Paul specifically has a lot of like really cool, unique uh, rhythms in his music. Fuck yeah! All right, um, I've been schooled. I'm getting into it. <laughs> so yeah, AK Paul, and then Subtract was another one. Oh yeah. Um, Subtract. Is maybe kind of more where I'm leaning now. I really like the kind of like indie. Uh, I don't even know what that genre is, but it's cool. Totally. Um, we were listening to some mid two thousands kind of indie vibes, uh, more on like the the, the rock side. But I okay. loved that early twenty tens indie dance. Like, yeah, it's kind of uh, yeah. not concerning yourself so much with what box you're in as like feeling your way around. Yeah. The well, track. it kind of was more just like, what's a song that I like? And then how can I in some way recapture the, the vibe that you get from listening to that song? I fuck with um, that. Like was I it think Pharrell said, uh, he doesn't try to recreate, like, he never tries to recreate songs. He just tries to um, reverse engineer the, the feeling you get from listening to the song. Yes. Um, so he's like, how can you get that same feeling and make something new? Um, and I think that's what uh, happened with the, I think he got, like, a lawsuit or something. For that uh, Robin Thicke song. Oh, that's true. The Marvin Gaye. Yeah, it didn't reverse yeah. engineer that one enough. It doesn't but... <laughs> sound that similar, though. So I, I can see what he means, where I think he just tries to capture, like, the feeling from one song, and he got it so spot on that people were like, this is that song. It's like, <laughs> well, if you listen to it, it's similar, but it, it's different. Yeah. It's that itty-bitty change. <laughs> yeah. Just joking. That's a vanilla ice thing. So oh. I think that... um. Flume definitely makes sense as an influence for you, and he is a supporter of yours. Uh, yeah. Is he someone that you have a relationship with now? Like, was that crazy for you at the time when he put you on the playlist, or like? Yeah, well, it was weird because when he put me on a playlist, um, had he told you, or it was a surprise? <laughs> no, I, I didn't have any like contact for him at that point. Uh, so he put it on the playlist, and someone's like, "Congrats on." Flume from you in that place. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I, I checked out the place. I'm like, oh, okay. Because um, up until then, I was kind of like, maybe he likes my music. Maybe he hates my music. I don't really know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that was cool to see. Um, well, and you remixed What's So Not as well. So, I assume you yeah. have a bit of a relationship with the Future Classics label, which is one of my favorites. Not really. No, Not okay. Really, actually, no. I mean, very loosely, I guess. But um, no, I mean, before that was kind of just like I did. Um, I remixed that What's Not song earlier in the year, um, which came out in May, I think it was. And I did a show uh, opening for What's Not in 
April, I think it was. Um, nice. So yeah, that that was kind of what that was like the jumping off point, I think, because that was like the biggest song I released um, at the time. Um, Were you still in high school? Yeah. Yeah. What was that so, like? Yeah, that was, did Did you like high school? Did it fucking suck? Or were you just like, no, fuck I, you I losers? Like I have a song on Bloom's playlist. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, I, I don't know. I think, I think uh, as far as, I don't want to get into a discussion of the United States uh, <laughs> education system, <laughs> but I think there's many problems with, you can't really choose what you want to do. Yeah. Um, or there's no, like, if you're, if you want to go down a certain path of a certain career, you can, but you also have to take, like, things that prepare you for rocket science, which <laughs> wasn't really what I was into. Uh, so I didn't really, yeah, it wasn't really my thing just because uh, I was like, I want to do something creative, but I don't really need to know math or <laughs> yeah. algebra or... Or yeah, the only math you need to know is these crazy polyrhythms and three, four time. <laughs> yeah, no, not even that. Um, but yeah, I was like, I don't know, like, there's, it's, it's like over preparing you for something you're not going to do. Um, so no, I never really enjoyed it, but I did enjoy history, I guess. History was cool. Hell yeah, history um, is cool. But I was kind of like, yeah, I want to do something creative, which school can prepare you for, but also you don't have to go to school if you're going to do something great. You can just do it and try and become good at it. Um, and hopefully you're good at it. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it kind of kind of hurts when, <laughs> even sometimes when you're know. good at it, it doesn't, it's think, hard to I go think places. anybody can be good at it. I agree. Sort of I agree. Because, I don't know. Like, also, when I started good, out, I definitely wasn't good. So. And good is, like, <laughs> subjective as well. Like, uh, if you're learning your craft oh, yeah. and you're honing in on different skill sets, you will get better at getting what you want to do, right? Well, now people are making music that sounds like... I mean, I mean, if you're making anything that's, like, experimental music, it's definitely subjective because... Uh, Maybe it sounds bad, but maybe you meant for it to sound bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ugly is but, beautiful, and that's what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think a lot, like, looking at what's bad, and there's no real objective bad, well, there might be, but <laughs> there's no objective, objective bad. Um, looking at that and then seeing either what they did wrong, or maybe they did it so wrong that you can learn something from it. Like, maybe I can do what they did because they don't at all know what they're doing. Like old punk rock records. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like not knowing what you're doing can lead you to cool things. And I try to, I try to stay in between not knowing too much and, uh, like, cause there's a problem with some people learn Every, well, not you can't learn everything, but they try to learn as much as possible. Right. And then they're like, I can't do that thing because it goes against my music theory I learned. <laughs> or whatever, traditional songwriting. And it's like, all right, so are we going to be writing music that is from like 200 years ago? Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you I, can't I remake think, um, Beethoven, man. Tchaikovsky is already there. <laughs> yeah, like... Um, yeah, I have a friend who said, like, uh, he went to music school, or, like, he had music lessons in, or not music lessons, he had a music class in high school, and his, there's a lot of stuff that he did that his teacher didn't like, and then now he's like, I'm still doing some of that stuff now, and I think it sounds good. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think there's really any sort of, I don't know, like, I think the more you break the boundaries and what you create, the better. I uh, agree. Find a way to get something that's kind of crazy to work and bring it into something that makes sense, then that's better. Um, I agree. 
Are there examples think, of you trying some weird, crazy things for the first time on your album that you're working yeah, on? Yeah, for sure. I think my album's probably the most crazy and maybe the most unique thing I've done. Hell yeah. Um, Talk to me about it a little I, bit. Um, well, I don't know if I've actually said how many songs on it, but it's close to like 30 songs. Damn! Are you going to try to cut them down, or are you going to have like a massive double, triple... You know, LP. I don't know if it's, don't know if it's double, triple, quadruple. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they don't cut vinyl so much anymore, so or make CDs. So I guess it's really yeah. just as long as you want it to be on DSP. I mean, you can buy. You can buy. Maybe we can make the vinyl. You can buy it and you can cut it in before uh, little like tortilla chips. But um, <laughs> no, it's yeah, it's it's probably gonna be like thirty songs. Damn. About, maybe a bit less. Maybe like twenty five or something. But yeah, it, well, it was kind of cut down from more tracks. Um, and I think I might use those tracks for like a mix or send them mm. to people to sing on whatever. But um, yeah, 30 was like the cut down version of it. Wow. How long um, have you been working on those songs? Are they like collected from across your career or your time producing? Or are they all new? No. It, I started them, I started the album probably. December last year. Wow. But good yeah. for you. Now, here's the real thing. Are they all finished? Because I know it's real easy for producers to start ideas and not um, so easy to finish. I would say most of them are. Yeah, I think maybe... Well, the mixing-wise, they're not finished. So... Um, well, that's... It may be not necessarily your thing. Do you mix your own tracks? or? Do yeah, you... I, I mix all my own tracks. Nice. Well, except I haven't mixed... Minimal and the what's not remix. And I think that's it. I think Enough the, for I, you to count um, on one hand is pretty impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, I haven't mixed those two, but I've mixed all the other ones. And then, yeah, like I mixed the real one, which is kind of a pain because I still didn't I feel like I've learned a lot from mixing that, but at the time I definitely didn't know <laughs> any technical side. Of mixing. Well, sometimes um, not knowing what you're doing works in your favor. <laughs> yeah, I found this one, these mixing tutorials of this dude, uh, what's his name? I think his name's Gregory Scott. Hell yeah. And, and he has like, it's like, oh, what's it? it's Kush, Kush Audio or something. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, it's loud. <laughs> No, it's like, it's like this really, like, it looks like it was filmed in, like, the early 2000s, you know, it's recent. It's like, today we're going to be learning how to mix, are, are you mixing your bass drum bad? <laughs> like, let's, let's figure out You're what like, you're doing yes, on. yes. Like, oh, yeah. Rad Hatter <laughs> says Kush After Hours. I don't know if that's... Kush After Hours, that's what it is. I love Kush After Hours. Kush After Hours is one of the best uh, YouTube shows. No, but yeah. the best tip was to mix in mono. Mm. It's like, turn off all stereo, just mix in mono, because if you're mixing it in mono, and I think that's a general tip that a lot of people know anyways, um, but at the time, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, you can mix in mono. I'm like, I'm going to try that. Like, when you put it back to stereo after mixing in mono for a long time, it actually sounds good if you've got it sound good in mono. Nice. Because, I guess it makes you know, sense too, because you don't want it to sound good in stereo and then sound like shit in well, mono you get, either. You can get stereo elements after the fact, but if it's sometimes when you're mixing stereo, it gives you perceived room that you don't have. Like if if it sounds right. bad, it might be because it just sounds bad, and um, you can sometimes think, all right, well if it's in the left ear only, it's it's not really affecting what I'm hearing over here, even though it is. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think uh, mixing mono is probably the biggest thing. But um, Wait, go back to your album. I want to hear what sort okay. of weird experiments you've been doing on the 30 tracks that you've got for an album. Yeah, a lot of it's, there's a few drum bass songs. Well, not, I guess it's like drum and like breakbeat rhythms yeah. or drum based rhythms but not necessarily it's more I guess Apex to inspired Ooh, like, fuck yeah it's just, it's just melodic uh, drum bass kind of yeah um, the one track that's like a jungle 
uh, future songs, so it's like melodic jungle. Nice. Um, some ballet funk ones. Actually, one of the next singles is uh, a ballet funk song. Ooh. I, did a, I can't wait to hear indie, that. An indie song. But not like a full indie song, but like indie future. Like I'm using the lo-fi like indie drum samples. Yes. But mixed with future. Um, and then a lot of like house house rhythm trap. So now the kick isn't on like a four on the floor beat, but the clap is on two and four. Or yeah, two and four. Uh, so it's like a faster clap rhythm for trap, but it's in like the trap. I like this. I like that you're going all over the place. I think that for a debut album from an artist to me, it usually represents a statement about who that artist is, because this is not another EP release. It's your debut album. So do you right. feel that that is true for this collection of songs, maybe just in the variety or in the, the fun that you're having making them? Like, I kind of, I mean, it can kind of be like a statement or something I guess it's it's more of just like I wanted to make some stuff that I thought sounded cool and I wanted to have fun doing it yeah because I was kind of stressing myself out about trying to make the best possible thing I'm like maybe I'll just have fun doing it and that's better than stressing yourself out about it um so yeah a lot of it's more just like just like I had an idea of doing something random and trying it out. Um, it's amazing that you did that so many times and it worked out and you had so much fun that you are down with 30 of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, it's kind of just like I make a bunch of stuff and then decide which of it's good. Yeah. And which of it's not good usually. Maybe I'll continue working on and make like a different mix or something. Yeah. Because I did a... I did a mix last year that was like, usually when you, it was a Nest HQ mix. Usually when you do those, you do like your favorite tracks and you try and mix together like a standard DJ set. I'm like, what if I just release like a a mixtape essentially of like the songs that I don't want to release? I and love that's what that. I did. Um, um, this, uh, my friend a Amtrak does that as well, has done that a few times. Oh, yes, do they? Yes. These mixtapes called um, Hey There Kiddo, and there's like part one, part two, part three, okay. and it's just a bunch of yeah, like yeah. unfinished Random ideas stuff. and cool right. shit that sounds good when you mix it because you only need like one minute of like sick All right. loop or something, but like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you should totally yeah. do that again. <laughs> so I'll probably do like some sort of, people are doing like a lot of like online festivals, but I haven't like... All of my live shows are always all my music. Right. Um, and I didn't really want to break that for doing an online show. Totally. So like, if I'm going to do one, it's got to be some sort of thing where it's just all my music. And maybe a lot of unreleased stuff. Well, it sounds like when you do release the album, you have a full set's worth of material. That would be a sick way to, like, if That's we're true. still not touring, yeah, yeah. to create some sort of... Well, I want, to do a, I want to do a visualizer for the album. Hell so yeah. Do you make your theater. visuals, by the way, like your album cover work and stuff? Your, your no, no. Work? Well, the album art, the art for the Rio song, for High Like This, was done by um, someone named Ramon. He does like, a lot of 3D stuff. Cool. The Knight's um, Helmet? No one saw it because I was playing bison footage. But <laughs> Yeah, it's a medieval helmet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I guess... What you can put together from that is that the album is medieval. It's like neo medieval, I would say. Fuck yeah, I fuck so with it's that. It's a lot of medieval stuff just because I like fantasy and medieval uh, aesthetics. Yeah. But, Wait, like with some like loot and shit, like 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 you know with those weird noises from the medieval songs. You mean like musically uh, or like aesthetically? No, no, I just mean visually. <laughs> okay. Um, I am using some like. Harps and flutes, so it's That's kind of, I guess a little Celtic, maybe. Yeah. Um, I did use a bow and arrow sound in the song, but Ooh. I kind of made it, because it, I thought it sounded really cool when, like, you pull back a, like, draw a bow. And, did you record yeah. the sample was yourself? That? No. It was okay. just when I downloaded it. I probably should record it myself, because the one I use kind of sounds like crap. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Just be uh, out there in the woods, like, freaking everyone out, pulling an arrow. You know, I, I, actually, I actually did have a uh, bow and arrow one. It was like a... It's I fun. Think just a practice one. But yeah, it's fun. Um, but yeah, it's kind of medieval in its aesthetic theme. Because I like sick. medieval stuff. I love that. Uh, and it, the reason I did the medieval stuff is because I had a dream. I Like, I woke up and I was like, well... I, and I had a dream that I was listening to my music on Spotify and it had a medieval artwork. <gasps> so I gotta do it. Whoa, that's fucking crazy. I love that. So it's kind of a weird <laughs> reason I did it, but it was just a random dream I had. I'm like, I gotta make that my stuff. That's so cool. Do you have dreams often that make their way into your work? Or that not was kind really. of like. No, not really. It was just that one. It's a prophecy. But, <laughs> so yeah, that's where the medieval is that. But, that's so cool um, do you have so any yeah, idea kind of the, when it might basically. do you have any idea when it might come out or are you like even looking at a release date yet or just gonna yeah. let it well wrap? so I I don't I mean I guess I can say I don't know if it's really like a I don't know I don't know if it's a spoiler or anything or like <laughs> spoiler as alert far as like, <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if like the music industry doesn't like when you give spoiler alert to like spoil things but <laughs> Uh, there is Spoil two it. more singles coming out. It's probably one more before the end of the year. Um, and probably one ne early next year. And I say the album's coming out after that. So maybe March, maybe, nice. I would say. Yeah. Uh, it was, I was planning on releasing it like late November. Uh, but with the mixing of uh, this last song, it kind of dragged it out. Uh, but I now, I think I'm better at mixing now, uh, and there's a few plugins that I've downloaded that have helped with the mixing process, so I've kind of become more efficient at that. Um, but that that kind of delayed everything, so I'd say probably in March, and yeah, so there's two more two more singles before it, and then it's coming out, so probably March. I'm super stoked to hear those singles. High Like This is fantastic. I really, I think it was one of my favorite tracks uh, that came out last week. Uh, I was very oh, into it. <laughs> um, it's been about an hour. Is there anything okay. else that you want to say or share with people about anything you've got going on? Any random dreams you've had lately? Anything at all? Uh, hmm. Any random dream? <laughs> well, I guess I would say, um, like, I, I don't know. I keep an eye out for, I have a friend named Rad Hatter who's coming out with Hey, this, Rad uh, Hatter! He's coming out with an EP soon, I think. Uh, I have a friend, Jack Slade, who's coming out with an EP soon. Hell yeah, Jack uh, so Slade. keep an eye out for them. Uh... I don't know. That might be it. Shout out. I get shout out Rice Brew. Check out what they're doing. They're I will. I fucking will. Um, and yeah, that, that's probably about <laughs> it. I don't know. <laughs> that's it. Allie Lynn says she loves us two humans. So that's you and me. <laughs> Allie that's Lindsay. What? Allie oh, Lindsay what? loves you and loves me oh. too. <laughs> Oh man, thank you so much for all those amazing clips that I used in the intro, by the way. I'll have to make sure that you see like the official I'm gonna have, Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and watch that. I'll show it to you. <laughs> all right. Um, so on the way out, we're going to listen to Water. And you picked that song because it shows your more ambient side. You said it was good for an outro, but is there anything you want to yeah, let people... Yeah, I thought people... it would an outro song. Is there anything else about that song or like memories tied to it for you that you might want to share? Uh... <laughs> Probably not. It's like, no. it just, just a, ra just a <laughs> random song I made. I guess the sound is kind of emotional. Um, yeah, and water represents emotions in uh, astrology and things like does? that. It does. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> Look at that. All right. You're you're tied psychically to something. <laughs> yeah, I guess songs usually you find sometimes find meaning like the meaning for a song you made long after it's been made. I've heard well, that. Oh, that's weird. Huh? I guess with the real one that just came out, so yeah. it, it works with everything that's happening right now. Uh, and it just so happened that everything delayed, so it came out this exact time. 
Uh, it's true. I, I guess the difference with that song is I worked on it so long that it gave it enough time before it even released to have me kind of. <laughs> Whereas some of the other songs, it's just like I make it and then I release it. And I'm like, there it is. Um, but I've been working on this last one so long that it allowed it time to, to gather me. Yeah. That's cool. Well, Quiet Bison, Quinn, <laughs> it was so nice having you and getting to know you a little bit Thank better. You. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to hear your album when it comes out, potentially March-ish, spring, summer of 2021. Hopefully. And if it oh, takes longer yeah. than that, we won't hold it against you because 30 tracks yeah, is a fuck out. ton of tracks. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the, it's the Cyberpunk 2077 of music. It's going to come out in 2028. I fucking guess. As the Earth smokes, <laughs> America stands. <laughs> or does yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, I, I would say it will probably come out or the sea level takes out the entire United States. I, I hope it comes out before that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope that there's that climate change doesn't wipe yeah. out everything. If there's any earth left to dance on or not dance on, <laughs> yeah, depending on how you the, find the music. It shouldn't come out before every venue in the United States burns down. Yeah. <laughs> but let's hope. Let's hope. Quinn, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest thank of your you. day. Me too.